So hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of AMZ's Corner. How are you all doing out there? So today I want to talk a little bit about some of, one of General Motors' liquidated brands. One of the brands that they had to get rid of because they had too many name plates, too many cars competing against each other. And that would be the Hummer name. Now, we have a Hummer H2 here, and this video is going to be less about this particular car, but more about themes and styling that maybe carry on to other vehicles that I have a, a suspicion may have been designed to be another Hummer offering. So those of you, I'm sure everybody knows that Hummers were, were designed for the government to be a replacement for all the aging vehicles to get our troops around. Um, very capable vehicle, the Hummer H1, uh, portal axles, plenty of ground clearance, lots of sp suspension travel, pretty darn near indestructible. Uh, I believe the, the first person who owned one of these as a civilian vehicle was of all people Arnold Schwarzenegger. Maybe I'm wrong, but I, I remember reading an article where Arnold Schwarzenegger felt he needed one for his personality, and, and he got one. And that's about when uh, when Hummer decided, or General Motors rather, decided to to make Hummer an actual brand and make vehicles that were in the idiom of the military vehicle, things like the H1, which was basically the, the military version that could meet emissions and crash uh, standards. Uh, they didn't sell them very long and they're very desirable now and then they made other models like the H2 and the H3 So they really only made three models and You know 2008 or so General Motors liquidated it or tried to sell the name or tried to sell the The brand to a Chinese company, but it just didn't happen So they ended up just liquidating everything and Hummer is no more but I think, uh, I think they made other vehicles and they were going to push that a lot more. I think Hummer was going to make a car or had a car designed for them. And that would be this here, the HHR. Now, what I see when I see an HHR is I see a World War II command car. Uh, I think Dodge made most of them, but it had styling very similar to this. The, the, the old school style hood, the retro looking hood the way the fenders flare out. I think this car here was meant to be a Hummer offering, Hummer's car. Uh, and why I say that is a lot of manufacturers, when they make a mark, when they make a brand, whether it be Hummer, Saab, Saturn, or anything else like that, the, the styling cues seem to, to go with that line of car. And what I see when I see these two vehicles, I see very similar styling cues. And that's what leads me to believe that the HHR was meant to be a Hummer vehicle. The first thing I notice is just the shape of the vehicle itself. Uh, all the, the Hummer vehicles, the H1, H2, and H3, all kind of look the same. Just kind of bigger or smaller versions of it. And we look at things like the A pillar, the B pillar, the C pillar, and the D pillar. The way the, the windows are all shaped in the car, all have a theme in, in the Hummer vehicles. And we look at the HHR, and the pillars are all have that same theme. Smaller windows, less glass, less visibility, which I guess is more of a, a hindrance, something they probably didn't want to have. Uh, these HHRs are some of the hardest cars to see out of because of these little windows. But I think uh, that's part of the styling cue that matches this, other than the military-esque look of them. Um, some other cues I noticed on these cars is like in the interiors when we go to look inside of the HHR we see the round vents just the general layout and the look of the inside when you look back at the quarter windows the rear windows the back glass it just has this this obstructed view look to it and we come over to the Hummer over here and other than being a lot more utilitarian inside obviously the layout the setup of it is very similar. The round vents, the stack in the middle. We look back at the rear windows, just the, 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 the strange shape of them, the limited visibility, the way you, you just feel in it, feels very much and looks very much like that. Now, the other thing that kind of leads me to believe this is the nomenclature. Um, you have the H1, the H2, the H3, and then we have the HHR. Now, I'm not sure what that's an abbreviation of. I've heard some good ones, uh, HHR. 
uh, homeboy hot rod, homo hot rod. Uh, I'm sure there's some other not too PC names they call the HHR. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised if that was like a Hummer something car. And, and that was the nomenclature behind the HHR because it was a theme Hummer had going. The styling, the nomenclature, the, the look, the, the military-esque look of them. So ultimately, I think this car here was meant to be a Hummer vehicle, but maybe they knew Hummer wasn't going to last. Maybe they knew the, they were going to be in trouble having too many vehicles fighting against each other, but they figured to release the HHR as a Chevrolet offering. I can't find any information anywhere to prove or disprove this. And that's where I want you guys. I'm wondering what you guys think of this. You think this car here could have been a Hummer offering? Could this have been sold in a Hummer showroom alongside H2s, H3s, and uh, if they still made them, H1s? But yeah, Hummer, you know, it, it went the way of the dodo bird. It, too many vehicles fighting against each other. This thing here ultimately shares a platform, the frame, the drive line, the all wheel drive, the rear axle, everything pretty much in this truck is exactly what you would have in a Chevy Silverado or a, a Yukon or a, an Escalade or a Suburban and all that. So they seem to hold up pretty well. I mean, they have their issues peeling chrome and finishes and all that, but this one here happens to have a six liter engine in it. Pretty cool. I always thought this was kind of neat. How the hoods open clamshell style, forward style. Uh, neat in theory, but suck to work on. Uh, it sucks to do anything that you would normally stand in front of the vehicle. But isn't that just a, just a neat look though, to have that open that way. You get the pull handles, these are supposed to be to, to help you. Or at least they were in the H1. I think they're more for looks on this one. And we got the big six liter version in this. Yeah, they, uh, really stinks to work on the front of these. But otherwise, I mean, if you look at this and you look at a Chevy Silverado or any of those, it's gonna look pretty similar. Same with underneath it. Now, one big issue that these, I had with these is they didn't retain any of the portal axles. So you still have this, this low differential pumpkin right there that's your you know that's all your ground clearance where the the h1s had portal axles and double wishbone suspension that gave you a ton of clearance so ultimately this is barely more capable than your standard pickup truck but yeah so anyways guys i just wanted to make this little video because i've been looking at the shops hhr and we have a you know a handful of of hummer h2s and h3s that come through here and i've always thought the two of these vehicles were meant to be sold side by side. You know, you got your troop car and you got your command car. All right. Well, I figure uh, we can't compare these two cars without taking them for a road test. So why don't we go around the block and see how these things drive. Something tells me this is gonna drive like a, like a boxy Yukon. Um, it's not real long, like a Suburban. And it's probably not as long as your average pickup truck, Silverado or whatnot which kind of, uh, it's, it's shortness kind of leads credence to my theory that the HHR being so short as well may have been designed for the same dealer. This one here has 104,000 miles on it, not a lot at all, so it still feels pretty good. Now visibility out of these things is horrible. This has to be one of the worst to see out of. Although this isn't as bad as the HHR, uh, I can see, you know, I can see my blind spots if I look back. But the windows are kind of narrow, so you kind of limit it a little bit. And that drives just like a, just like a Yukon, just like a, like a short Suburban. It's got the six liter in it. But it's a heavy vehicle. I don't know what the, the weight is on this thing, but uh, even with that six liter, I just feel like it has a lot of get up and go to it. Not a lot of body roll, a little bit, but not as much as you'd expect in a vehicle like this. Definitely wider than a, than a, than a Silverado or a Yukon or 
one of the vehicles this shares its platforms with feels a little wider doesn't really go very fast hasn't got a lot of pep I can feel that engine I can hear it trying it's definitely making the noises but uh, I have to say this thing weighs what 4,500 5,000 pounds at least we'll take a look when we get out bit of dive when you brake hard. Very trucky. Very trucky. Probably drives, probably drives like it looks, I'd have to say. You know, boxy and square. Not aerodynamic at all. Well, all right guys, just uh, feels like driving a pickup truck. It feels like driving pretty much any other GM truck of this era. Well, all right guys, why don't we get inside the HHR and see how so, that drives. The layout, rather similar like we saw before. Uh, I think this car, I think the, uh, I think the HHR more closely resembles the, H, uh, the H3. The H2 being a little more closer to the Yukon and and the H3 being more of a, a trailblazer platform. But indications, I mean, looking out the windows, it feels like a lot like that Hummer does. The same shape of the windows. The windshield is kind of short and narrow and, and long looking. These windows, the main driver's windows and rear windows and quarter windows are all feel very similar to look out of um, it feels like a car version of the truck I was just in handling feels like you know your generic Chevy Cobalt or whatever because that's basically what the platform is shared from the HHR uh, like the Cobalt uh, some of the 9.3 it shares some of the 9.3's features and, and suspension and engine setup and it handles more like the car, but a car version of a Hummer. It feels to me, it, it feels to me like an HHR feels to a Cobalt as that H2 felt like driving a Yukon. But... I, you know, if you could, if you put a Hummer badge on this car and sold this at a Hummer dealer, no one would bat an eye. Everyone would think it's, oh, it's a Hummer offering. And it feels like a Hummer offering. It looks like a Hummer offering. It smells like a Hummer offering. But it was sold by Chevy. I'm wondering if they had this car and they spent the time and money to design it and they saw how popular things like the PT Cruiser were and they figure, you know, we might as well sell it as a Chevy instead of a Hummer. Feels like a car Hummer to me. Definitely does. Well, anyways, guys, it's uh, first thing in the morning. I figured I'd come in early because... Uh, I've been waiting for a long time to get two, these two vehicles side by side for this comparison. And uh, yeah, if you guys have any light to shed on this story, if you guys maybe know something I don't, an article that I maybe had missed, or maybe there's some information out there that can lead credence to what I believe this car being a Hummer vehicle that was designed too late to be an actual Hummer vehicle. Well, anyways, guys, uh, I love the comments down below, even though I can't possibly respond to all of them. I try to thumb up as many as I can. Uh, the Facebook group's doing really well. If you guys haven't joined that yet, you should check that out. Amesy's Automotive Corner on Facebook. And on that note, and until next time, keep it out of the cabbage.